Recently, me and my friends... Hold up. I gotta do the cringy Minecraft YouTuber thing, don't I? Recently, me and my friends over at the Slunchcord decided to join a Pixelmon server. If you're unfamiliar with Pixelmon, it's a modded version of Minecraft that allows you to catch, battle, and trade Pokemon along with a whole selection of new blocks and mechanics. I actually have no prior experience with either modded Minecraft or playing on a server, so this was going to be an entirely blind experience for me. Also, only a small portion of people on Earth are actually subscribed. If you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Enjoy the video. Did I do that right? So we jumped onto the Complex Gaming server and joined the world of Pearl. The key thing about Complex Gaming that we weren't aware of at the time is they have two different server types when it comes to Pixelmon. Colored servers like red, blue, green, and gold and rival servers, like Diamond, Platinum, and Pearl. The colored servers are designed for a more light-hearted, fun experience, whereas the rival servers are for more serious, battle-oriented players. And so us, a bunch of casuals just looking for a fun time playing funny block game Pokemon, found ourselves on the TryHard server with strict rules, unforgiving mods, and aggressive players. We quickly got to work figuring out the best way to distinguish ourselves on the server. We set up a base and figured out one of the best money-making methods available, planting and harvesting apricorns. Tristan was our master farmer and started raking in the big bucks, with the added benefit of being able to craft plenty of Ultra Balls so Jay and I could travel across the land and catch Pokemon. Different Pokemon spawn in different biomes, weather conditions, and times, so exploration was very important. Within my first two hours on the server, something absolutely insane happened. You see, Legendaries spawn in a specific way. They don't spawn like normal Pokemon, they spawn randomly on someone every 30 minutes to an hour or so. And, unbeknownst to us, they have protection on them for a little while so that only the person who they spawned on can capture them. With Pearl being a popular server, very often reaching max player count of 150 people, this made your chances of finding one very, very low, something that would prove to be a problem later on. But without any knowledge of this, while I was out wandering in the forest, I happened to turn around and notice a giant Zacian standing there. I offered to let Jay come catch it since he had stronger Pokemon than me at that point, but when he teleported to me, it wouldn't let him engage. It gave him some text about only the hero being able to tame the beast or some other nonsense. So he threw me a few Ultra Balls and I caught it on the first try. I was immediately flooded by messages from other players on the server trying to buy it from me because apparently, Zacian is one of the rarest and most powerful legendaries on the server. Like, I was had, walking uh, around the corner and I just saw his leg and I was like, oh, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you aren't the cause of this legend spawn or legend trusted to battle this legendary. So only I can face it? Yeah, you're like the hero of the sword or something. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> With your tiny shroomish. <laughs> <laughs> What, what happened? So, did you know Weasel what? just stumble into a fucking. You get my Pokeballs. You are, you are, the, you are the hero of the sword. Holy you actually shit. got Holy it. Shit. Holy wow. shit. Holy shit. You're the, Weasel you're is the just. Guy. Wow. The people in the chat are like, Zashian was caught already. They're, they're like, I, I swear if this Zashian despawns, I'm a cry. They're all hunting for it. <laughs> You got, like, entrusted with the fucking power of the sword dog. And here I am, having only played for two hours, not understanding anything, catching my own. We decided from that point on that I was the protagonist of the story. After some more base building, exploring, and spending some time in the safari catching rare Pokemon, we decided to make a goal out of the experience. Do the one thing you do in every Pokemon game. Catch them all. Complete the Pokedex. Sounds simple enough, right? <laughs> no. For starters, Pixelmon has a full national dex. That means every Pokemon, over 900 of them to collect. Add on top of that, a lot of Pokemon have very specific evolution requirements, like stones, leveling up in a certain location, having max happiness, or even just something dumb like taking a certain amount of damage, or landing three critical hits in the same battle. At least they don't make you turn your computer upside down to evolve NK. And icing on the cake of all of this is that many times, people would sell rarer mons on the GTS neutered so they couldn't breed. Yes, 
An actual feature on the server was neutering your Pokemon so others couldn't get their hidden abilities or breed their own and perfect their Mon. Something about the economy or some bullshit, as if prices weren't arbitrarily set by staff anyways and selling under a certain value was against the rules. Like, at one point there was literally a bunch of shiny spins being sold in bulk, which was an item you could redeem for a free random shiny Pokemon, which didn't really have that much value in the first place because shinies weren't that great. But you could actually get uh, Ultra Beast out of them. So, you know, people would actually buy them up and try to get Ultra Beast. And staff raised the price on them, like set a minimum price that they could be sold for out of nowhere. What kind of market is that? Another big issue rose up on our journey to complete the decks. You see, tucked away in the 40 page rulebook of the server is a very fun and apparently sacred rule. To understand the absurdity of this rule, we have to think about the core, fundamental philosophy of Pokemon games. Something that, although technology has evolved to make it easier, still exists to this day in the franchise. Trading. The reason Pokemon was so successful early on and was able to have such a staying force comes from the two versions of the same game concept. Version exclusives, trade evolutions, box legendaries, all of these are things that at least before the internet as we know it today, forced you to be social. To make friends who were into Pokemon as well and trade with them so you could collect everything. You would get Ruby, your friend would get Sapphire, you would trade each other the version exclusives, trade your Kadabra for their Graveler so that they'd evolve and trade back, and even trade your Groudon for their Kyogre temporarily so that you could get their deck data. But since you were both working to complete your Pokedex, this was beneficial to you. This is a concept known as Dex Trading. It's how Pokemon is played. So, what happens when you dex trade on the server of dedicated Pokemon fans who, you would at least assume, love the series enough to play a whole modded version of Minecraft about it? Do you know what happens? You get punished. It's illegal. A staff member shows up unannounced to question and harass you, and you get thrown in Pixelmon jail for three hours, and for the next week, Every time you log into the server, you're greeted with a message reminding you that you did something bad, and if it happens again, they will wipe all of your progress. It is one of the gravest sins you can commit on the server. Playing Pokemon the way it's intended to be is against the rules. At this point, we'd been jailed for playing the game how we assumed it's supposed to be played, learned the absolute brutal nature of dungeons and their mid-rewards, figured out how strict and unforgiving the mods can be, and realized that actually doing anything we wanted to do on the server was a near impossibility. By now, Jay, Lonus, and Tristan were basically tired of it and stopped playing, something I absolutely do not blame them for. I honestly thought about it myself, but it already completed around 60% of the decks. I'm someone who's obsessed with the collection aspect of Pokemon, something apparent when you look at my living form decks at home. So. I fell for the sunken cost fallacy, and decided to continue my journey to be the first Pearl player with a complete Pokedex. Most of my adventure was an easy one, just evolving and catching the regular Pokemon I still needed. I started keeping a checklist of what I was missing and marking things off as I went. Breeding was a huge help in this as well. When you breed two Dittos together in Pixelmon, you get a random egg. The Pokemon that hatches can be anything that isn't legendary, even including Ultra Beast. I managed to acquire quite a few dittos and set up multiple farms. Fully evolved starters, Overquill, Kangaskhan, Runagrigus, and many other fully evolved or rare spawns were easily found this way. This also helped me go ahead and knock out all the baby Pokemon I was missing. It was finally legendary time. Including Mythicals and Ultra Beast, there's almost a hundred legendary Pokemon. That means almost an entire 10% of the decks is legendaries, which, as I mentioned, are nearly impossible to obtain. With the exception of Celebi, the Legendary Birds, and the Creation Trio plus Arceus, who can all be spawned at shrines if you have the right items. All Legendary Pokemon are only obtainable through the earlier mentioned spawn mechanics, through random spins in crates, the server's gotcha mechanics, or by buying or trading them off of other players. This is a very expensive endeavor and makes finishing the decks an excruciating process especially given that it's most likely the final part you'll end up needing to complete. So far I had Zapdos, Moltres, Articuno, Arceus, Dialga, Palkia, Giratina, 
a Shaman I got from a Dungeon Reward, my Special Zacian, and a Mewtwo from a Legend Spin. 10 down, roughly 70 to go. Of course, in that whole time I only got one more Legend Spawn, an Entei. Some crates I earned through rewards got me a couple things like Feramosa, Groudon, and Regigigas. Beating all the NPC gems gives you two legends, so I dive back into competitive Pokemon for a bit and manage to get Diancie and Kyogre. Zygarde can be formed by hunting cells in the world, so I collected enough to form the 10% form, and Meltan can spawn from smelting a bunch of ore. I got two bells that have a chance of spawning Lugia and Ho-Oh once an in-game day, but after 10 real-world days of time on there, it still hasn't happened, so they're really just decorations. Everything else, I had to start buying. I would spend my time grinding up coins and selling off the legends I had already to buy more. It became like feeding an addiction. I would check the GTS every day to see what was being sold that I still needed. I actually started to make some friends here and there that were doing the same, so we were constantly buying, selling, and trading from each other, as well as looking out for what each other needed. Right when I was at about 95% dex completion, I got beaten to the finish line by a player named Tauros, who claimed the title of the first person to complete the Pokedex. Well, I couldn't give up at that point, so second place it would be. And finally, I did it! I got down to just Reshiram, the rarest legend alongside Cosmog and Cubfu, and managed to blow my savings on one. And that was it. I had done it. Almost. There were two Pokemon left, actually. Chimeco and Chingling. I had somehow managed to make it the entire time without getting them. One of my trade buddies sold me a Chimeco, which I bred and hatched a Chingling. And that was it. I finished the entire Pixelmon National decks. With all the odds stacked against me, competing with players who poured insane amounts of real money into the game and rules meant to stifle my progress, I had reached the end of my journey. Like Thanos after the snap, my job was done, and I retired to a house out in the fields and watched the sunset on my completed journey. Since then, I've done a few things on Pearl. Spruced up my house, made a little collection of rare trinkets, and documented my journey. I thought a good thing to keep me occupied would become a gym leader. Since I beat the NPC gyms anyway, it felt like a good next step. I went for Ghost Gym, one of the few gyms at the time that was still lacking a leader. Unfortunately, I got denied. And instead, a mod that hasn't been online in over a week got put there. Seems like a great choice. Actually, Something I noticed is that all of the gym leaders are either mods or people who had purchased a rank, so clearly there's some favoritism going on here. I guess grinding your way to the top isn't as impressive or likable as just lining the staff's pockets, but really, what else can you expect from a US server? The fake American dream is what we know best. And that's it. That's my experience with a Pixelmon server. It's been about a month since then at the time of this recording, and looking back on all of it, I had fun. Pixelmon is an interesting mashup of two worlds that I both really enjoy, Pokemon and Minecraft, that still manages to capture the feel and entertainment of both franchises. Would I recommend this to any Pokemon and or Minecraft fans? Yes? But don't play on a server, or if you do, at least don't play on a server that charges you 50 bucks for a hidden ability Pokemon. Just make a world with your friends and go play around and have fun. Or even start up a single player world. There's plenty to go do in those, there's gems to challenge, you can actually find legendaries and raid dens where they provide a challenge and you're not guaranteed to catch them but it's not some random mechanic on whether or not you'll even be able to encounter one. Speaking of playing with friends, my friend Jay is working on his own video about the Pixelmon experience over on his channel, so when that's up, you should go give that a watch and subscribe to him. I'll put a link to his channel down in the description. And with that, I don't know how to end a video.